as their first movie. I might have even gotten stuck with a PG-13 rating. Let's destruct why. First off, the first six minutes are incredibly dark and violent. They set the tone for the entire film. In the first six minutes, you have a half-successful double murder, which takes the place in form of death by blunt force trauma to Quasimodo's mother. And again, as I mentioned, when Frollo sees how just deformed Quasimodo is, he attempts to drop him in the well. Okay. Plus, also in the, the first two minutes or so, when Quasimodo's parents and a couple of their buddies are trying to get into Paris, they're arrested, and you kind of get the first showings of the genocide theme that is quite prevalent throughout the film. Genocide in a Disney movie. And Frollo does his darndest to just wipe them off the face of the map, as he quite plainly puts it. For 20 years, I have been taking care of the gypsies, one by one. And yet, for all my success, they have thrived. I believe they have a safe haven within the walls of this very city. A, a nest, if you will. They call it the Court of Miracles. What are we going to do about it, sir? Yeah, Disney, Disney, G-rated Disney movie. Uh, yeah. Um, plus in the film you also have burning at the stake. I mean, he tries to burn Esmeralda at the stake for being a witch. Uh, basically, though, that's just publicly. Privately, he just wants to bang her. He sees her dancing all seductively at the Feast of Fools, and he's just like... <laughs> Kind of creepy, isn't it? He's got to be like 40 years older than she is. Although, frankly, the movie takes place over the course of 20 years and he never ages at all. Not even like a new gray hair or anything. It might just be the stupid hat that covers everything. I don't know. I hate, I hate, you, could, you wouldn't catch me dead in that hat. Plus there's also the burning in hell theme. Burning in hell. Basically, Frollo decides an ultimatum for Esmeralda while he's singing pretty much the coolest Disney song ever. It's called Hellfire. It's dark. It's, it fits with the tone of the film. It's dark. Basically like, uh, hey St. Mary, I really, really shouldn't be turned on by her, but I really am. Hey Maria, why I see her dancing there, why her smoldering eyes still scorch my soul. I see her, the sun caught in her raven hair. Um, I feel I'm slipping into sin here. I mean, I, I've like, I've never sinned in my life here. I, I don't know what to do. And then these giant red robed figures come out. I have no idea what they represent, but they are cool. And he's like, no, no, he's telling them, it's not my fault. And they're like, yeah, it is. You're kind of a dick in Latin. Mea culpa through my fault. It's not my fault. I'm not to blame. It is the gypsy girl, the witch who set this flame. It's not my fault. If in God's plan, he made the devil so much stronger than a man. He's just singing about how much he wants her, and he's like, no, 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 that's bad for me to want her. I'm like a public figure. So why can't you take a wife? In the book, Frollo was a priest and the catholic church you know they have celibacy and all that so in the book he's like okay it's understandable that you can't take a wife because you're a priest can't do that in, in the movie he's a public official and could i'm sure fairly easily take a wife if he wanted maybe even had one we didn't see the first 60 years of his life he basically says to himself okay she'll be mine i'm gonna burn her to death and she'll go straight to hell. Destroy Esmeralda and let her taste the fires of hell. Or else let her be mine and mine alone. Disney, it, it just doesn't fit with other kids' films. One of the big problems I had was by the end, Notre Dame Cathedral is under siege. And this is really where people start dropping, like flies. I mean, so the beginning of the Notre Dame siege in the book, like 
Clopin, he dies in the Notre Dame siege. Frollo dies. Uh, Esmeralda dies. Quasimodo dies afterwards. They all die. So the soldiers are like storming Notre Dame Cathedral. Nobody's dying. Nobody's dying. They're getting bricks on their head. <laughs> I think they, some of them do though, just because there are a lot of injuries that it's like, um, that would kill you. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would kill you, and it might have for them. Like, the one with the brick, too, right from the top of the head. That wouldn't be like, ooh, funny face. No, 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 that's like, a, you don't even feel it. You just drop and you're dead. Biggest problem that I have, and maybe I missed something, was that Quasimodo just conveniently has a vat of molten lead ready, right there, all heated up, ready to go to pour down on the attackers. <laughs> Where did it come from? We didn't see it anywhere else. Did, did his little stone buddies get it for him? Stone buddies that just finished like chewing up a rock and like spitting it out like a machine gun? <laughs> Was it the effeminate one? Where did it come from? Where does, where does Quasimodo get like molten lead on a moment's notice? Or is that just his imagination too? And the big thing is it just might have been because, you know, when the battle's done 20 minutes later, it's all cleaned up and everybody's so happy. That's another thing. The crowd, like the general crowd in this film is incredibly fickle. In the beginning, Quasimodo's crowned the king of fools, and they're all cheering him on. And, like right after, they're like, oh my gosh, what are you? That's no mask. It's his face. He's hideous. It's the bell ringer from Notre Dame. And then later, he's crowned the king of fools, and they're cheering him on. And then someone throws a tomato at him, the comic relief. So they've moved from comic relief to malicious. You think he's ugly now? Watch this. <laughs> And suddenly they're all like, oh, yeah, that could be fun. So they start torturing him pretty much. Then later, you know, they're all happy that he's like saved them from something. You know, considering the economic status of the French at that time, I'm pretty sure the Frollo burning down Paris just might have been the least of their worries.